Hey everyone, it's Monday the 15th of April and it's 6 o'clock in the evening. Right, in today's video, um, there's a number of things that I want to show you. I've got some items for my collections and whatnot. And I do apologise for the light glaring off of my glasses. In fact, I'll take them off for this, I think. Because that's annoying me looking at it. Anyway, I've got some barricade lamps here, new to the collection. And a homemade beacon that uh, a friend and fellow collector sent me. I've got a beacon down here, new to the collection, which I got off eBay. It's, uh, some model railway stuff we'll go through here. I'm not going to show you everything that's in these boxes because there's just a lot of the same stuff there. Um, and if I can remember what they were, there is some um, car boot items um, that I got over the weekend. I'm not actually going to show you the die cast because I want to do a separate video on that lot because I've got quite a lot to go through. Um, yeah, anyway, let's uh, start with a few updates, shall we? So, my lounge is looking vastly different. In fact, it's just a sea of Lego at the moment. I'm not going to turn the camera around because the sunlight at the moment is just going to swamp the camera. Um, but yeah. So I've been making space in here and preparations to build some tables to put a Lego City on because I really do miss the one I had. Um, it was just nice to sit there and create something. That's one large model, basically, isn't it? Um, and I used to just stick the radio on and I'd spend hours just building at the Lego City, you know, just building things and moving things around. And I just found that such a, a relaxing thing to do for me, so I decided I had to get one back. Um, so I'm almost ready. I've got all the boards to make the tops with and whatnot over at Mum's. Um, I just need to get the framework, or the timber for the framework, I should say. And I'm in the process of just trying to organise the Lego as best I can you know, before I put the tables up and whatnot. Because I've got drawers missing over here. So I'm just trying to fill in these gaps and things. I've got a bunch of empty trays down there as well. Um, I had had three very large tubs of loose Lego. I've now got two. I've actually narrowed it down to two. And I've still got one box to go through. Um... I may say for the weekend because I've got other plans for during the week. Uh, yeah, but it's getting there. Once I've got that tub sorted, I can actually pile the rest of this um, in the other room. I might even be able, if I clear down here, I could stack some of the smaller stuff down here temporarily. And then, uh, yeah, I can start constructing the tables. Um, yeah, but this is meant that at the moment I can't get the model railway down to uh, do anything with that because uh, my friend Kat has asked a couple of times over the last sort of three or four months now, you know, when the next model railway video is going to be. I don't know because <laughs> I can't get the I can't get the layout down. All the bench and everything that the uh, layout folds down onto is just covered in boxes of Lego and even some spare die cast that I want to get rid of as well. And then the other side of the bedroom is also covered in boxes of Lego and stuff. I have so much Lego. I'm actually, I have so much Lego that I'm actually avoiding buying more boxes of loose Lego. Unless I see something in it that I really want or need. Other than that I've been sticking to like Lego sets or like I did on Sunday at um, the local car boot sale here in town just buy some pre-assorted bags of bits mostly doors and windows because I always need doors and windows. Um, I've also been busy over in my workshop um, which you will see uh, my mum and my stepdad are going away for a few days. 
So um, I thought I would take that opportunity to get some stuff sorted out in the workshop. I've already made some preparations. I've added another bench, um, which looks just like the other bench, actually, in the sense of it's just covered in stuff and you can't really do anything on it. And that happened the same day that I built it, so... Uh, but I, I am planning to clear that, or as much of it, to, as I can tomorrow. Um, so I've got to go over there and help my stepdad out with something anyway. So once I'm done helping him, I was just going to bounce into the workshop and uh, just clear the decks a bit in there. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take the camera and the new tripod. I have a brand new tripod. It's um, a National Geographic one. Very lightweight and feels a bit flimsy because of that, but I guess the idea of that is um, so you can travel with it easier because I have got a carry case bag thing for it. Um, it does fold up quite small, unlike my other one, which is big, bulky and heavy and broke, which is why I bought this one. It's only 30 quid out of Argos, so if it does the job and lasts me a couple of years, it's good enough for me. Um, I'm quite looking forward to that because I've got plenty of bike projects to be cracking on with. I've got too many bike projects at the minute. Um, which is uh, kind of annoying, actually. Right. I think that is it for up updates. Unless you want to know anything about my Yamaha Jog moped, which is still running like a bag of shit when it wants to. I don't want to smudge his hairs. <laughs> it, it, sometimes it will run good enough where it's not actually that annoying to ride it and then other times, it, like this morning, it will run like an absolute bag of shite. You know, I could, on the way to Mum's it stalled out on me twice while slowing down to um, turn at junctions. Um, it was a pain in the ass to start this morning and I couldn't do much more than 30 mile an hour without it coughing and spluttering and really sort of throwing me about and jerking about. That was highly annoying. And it was marginally better on the way home. But then I could say go and ride it tomorrow morning and it would be fine. I, it puzzles me. It puzzles my stepdad as well. I have no idea. Um, there's a few things that I've found that seem a little odd. I did see the oil light flash on my way home. Keep in mind it's a two stroke so it's got a separate oil tank and it mixes it all for you. I know it's um, using the oil because it is going down and I don't have no oil leak so it's got to be mixing the oil with the fuel but it does seem to be mixing it rather quickly which makes me suspect I might have an issue there could part of the problem be that it's mixing too much oil into the fuel sort of uh, damping the fuel down as it were so there's not as much uh, kaboom going on um, I'm just guessing, or maybe the oil thing is just my imagination. I, I really don't know. But I have noticed that sometimes when it plays up, it does start smoking as well. Quite a lot. And it smells oily when it's running sometimes. Which to me isn't normal either. You know, I've asked on a few Facebook groups now and no one ever replies to my posts, you know, I'm only looking for some advice. Even if it was just, you know, take it to the nearest motorcycle shop and let them look at it. Nope, just not even that advice. Um, I mean, I don't know whether to just call it quits and just sell the damn thing, as is, you know, spares or repairs. Technically it runs and rides and it's MOT'd. Um, and it flew through its last MOT with no advisory, so if someone's willing to fix it, they'll have a good little ped there. Or, do I see if it's the carburetor and put a new carb on it? 
you know, do I fire the parts cannon even more at it? I mean, it is like 13, 14 years old now, so it is getting on a bit, poor thing. Um, you know, so I'm not going to blame it too much. I have got that coolant leak as well to deal with. Maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe it's um, losing a bit of vacuum through the casing, and that's why it's running like a heap. So maybe I could do that Wednesday or something. I've got Smart TV to hopefully seal it up. <laughs> I couldn't find a gasket anywhere for that side of the crankcase. It's on the water pump side. Um, so you've got the main casing cover for the water pump, and then you've got the little bit that your two water hoses go into. It's like a cover there. It's the main casing bit that's actually leaking. Um... I mean, not too badly, it's fine for just pooling to and from the mums like I have been you know, a few times a week. Which means I've only actually had to top up the coolant like once a month. Um, so it's not major. Maybe if I had to commute from here to Norwich every day, then it would be. But... Uh, You know, it does rely on a vacuum for that vacuum valve, the petcock. It's vacuum operated. Um, so I really don't want to pull the seat bucket out again. That's getting annoying. <laughs> uh, look at they've designed it so you just took a, the bottom of the seat bucket out instead. I mean, I had to cable tie another part of the um, plastic panels on because bloody the mounting for the screw broke. Again, it's just old brittle plastic, so not a lot I can do about that. And so long as they're secure, they'll go through an MOT. That's all it's got to be, is it's got to be secure. Right. I really can't think of anything else to update you on. I still have an MOT the leeway, by the way. It's still sitting out back. I'm going to uh, book that in this week. Well, I'm going to go in and see if I can book it in for this week. If not, whenever they can do it. Anywho. Let's look at the barricade lamps. So, a friend of mine on Facebook, he's also a collector, offered me some lamps up. He bought a job lot fairly recently, and as a couple of things in there that he didn't want. He literally bought the job lot for two or three lamps. I think it was two or three lamps, something like that. And the rest were just like duplicates of commoners muck lamps. Um, but some of them were actually in pretty much brand new condition, like this one, this RMJ Maxilite. Which is why he had three of these, and that's why I um, agreed to have one, because I would like at least one more in the collection that is in pretty much as new condition. So I'm stuck on the bottom there. <laughs> um, my other ones are quite rough, including one that's lost its hand, and so I'm going to cut it there and there. Um, and you do find these on eBay, but they're not actually that common. Uh, and then he, he sent me. A similar one. Now, I'm not sure if this is a genuine lamp because you can see this lens is different and this is a different colour plastic to that. But the base of the lens is exactly the same as that. And I don't think it's the same on the JSP Maxilo because at some point, sorry, I got a tickly nostril. At some point, JSP bought out RMJ. So I don't know if this is like a transition between their design of lens and body and they changed the body style to the Maxilite that, we, that you can still buy actually. As an LED lamp nowadays, but you can still buy it. But I do not know why my nose is tickling so much. That's why I turned, because I thought, you know, you're not going to want to see me do that, are you? <laughs> and I've had um, some hay fever issues today when my nose has felt like a dog's nose, cold and wet of this wind. I've got quite a bit of wind at the minute. Anyway, the third one. Now this one was basically a spares or repairs lamp. It had one of these lenses missing and the circuit needed some repair work. 
which I did, and I knew in my box of spares that I had a spare lens. And coincidentally, it's an absolute match. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is now a working Till Dawn Guardsman. I've got several of these, you know. I'll, I'd probably trade these with another collector. I actually like this one because it's got this sticker on, so I probably wouldn't trade this one, but I've got others. Uh, now, he also sent me, he only charged me postage for this. Um, more or less, anyway. He also sent me this thing. Um, he bought it on eBay a while back. I remember him actually buying it. Um, but I'm pretty certain this is a homemade lamp or beacon because that is appliance flex. That is half of a Tildorn Pilot 360 body and that's a Pilot 360 lens. There's a magnet and the circuit, I don't know if I'm going to get this out there to show you, hang on, yep, that's the bulb, <laughs> and then there's just a simple flash circuit in there, quite an old school one, because it uses a relay, and axial capacitor on there, actually, so I think that's quite an old flash circuit that's in here, I've inadvertently glued, because I had to glue this lamp holder back on the two standoffs that are in there, i just use some hot snot for that. But this body, I don't know if you can see it in there, it's also just hot snotted with sh um, shed loads of glue around there to glue it all together. Which is why I'm pretty certain this is homemade, but to be fair, it's pretty well done. Um, I had to put a new bulb in, which coincidentally I had a bucket load of these that I got from a auto jumble last year. So I've got loads of these spare, which is good because I had this beacon that needed another one in. And uh, the bulbs I've picked for these are bloody bright. Look, it seems like when I was testing them, some were dimish and some were just super bright. These are bright for filament bulbs. I don't know what the wattage is. So yeah, that is actually a bright lamp. Um, I'll do another video on these so I can show this stuff all working and whatnot. Quite like this one because I like listening to the relay click. It's got a good rhythm as well. There's a, a relay and a 555 timer on the circuit board with a few support components, you know, like um, a couple of capacitors and diodes and whatnot. It's very um, minimalistic circuit actually. Right. Now, the same friend sent me a link to eBay because he'd found this on there and it's was, the start bid was 49 pence um, being sold as spares or repairs because it just suddenly stopped working and it's actually a beacon I've been after for a while I just kept putting it off but I thought I wasn't going to walk away from this one and someone did put a bid in on this as well but I won this for, I think it was around five pounds, something like that, four or five quid, that's all I paid for this. So it's the uh, Dorman Smith Traffy Beacon, and yeah, I went and bulb in there, and the fix, well the problem was just really easy, which is what my gut was telling me, that it was an easy fix, that's the other reason I went for it, I listened to my gut. <laughs> Pardon me. Problem was in that plug, and it was as simple as a wire had just cut become disconnected, it was all neutral, that connects to this bit, that's all it was, I fixed that, put power to the plug, the beacon worked fine, <laughs> um, yeah, and I will show you this in another video as well, because I've got quite a few uh, lamps and lanterns and things, um, so I could do a whole video uh, showing them, flashing away, I guess I will put another flashing away, it's uh, warning up on that one. Um, right, so, that uploaded quick, I was just uploading a video to the LEGO channel, <laughs> it's already done, I can finish um, that up in a bit. Um, 
let's do the railway stuff. So, we've got a couple of boxes here now. I found this lot in a local charity shop and they were selling each item at two pounds each or three for five pounds. So naturally I went for the three for five pounds. Um, now I do need to sort through this because my friend Kat wants some as well. I have got some here that I've just lost interest in. I did try to go back and get some but you know naturally this lot sold pretty quick. But like I said, there's a couple of things in here that I'm just, I've just lost interest in or is spare anyway. So, oh, and the other thing is, this is HO scale. This isn't OO scale or double O scale or double O gauge, I should say. Yeah, this is um, HO stuff, which is pretty common in America. Um, and... Apparently it's um, a lot more common in Europe than it is over here in Britain. We tend to go towards, uh, I would say our two popular scales would be N gauge and OO gauge. Anywho, most of this, apart from that one coach because it is actually a OO gauge, is all American stuff. And the reason I bought it is because I do have an HO scale locomotive. My stepdad bought it. Um, gave it to me. He bought it in a job lot of locomotives that he found on Marketplace. Um, and when I got him that mallard, and I just gave him the mallard because I thought I've already got one, he um, basically turned around and said, You can have that Airfix one as well. So we basically traded. <laughs> um, it's, it's a steam loco and it's obviously older than this because a lot of this is actually fairly modern stuff. Um, I wouldn't mind get, um, getting hold of some uh, American style coaches that would suit my little steam loco. But I am in the future going to get some diesel locos to haul this lot around my layer because the wheel gauging is exactly the same. It will run on OO gauge track. It's just the actual scale, the size of these is smaller than OO gauge. Anywho, so I'm waving that around. We've got just a plain black tanker here. There's nothing special at all. Um, a few different cabooses. Uh, three of them have got ANAP Valley on them. And I do hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. We've got another one there. Different style, but still got ANAP Valley on it. I've got a couple of these. The other one hasn't got any wheels on it, but it's the Forest Lumber Co. I realize there's a number on there, 48. I wonder if the other one's got the same number on it. Another tank of there. I can't read what that says though. I'm going to have to get that under my uh, USB microscope, which I've now got two of. And they are actually quite fun to play around with. I've got one here. I'm going to look at that one in a minute. Um, there's two, the other two um, cabooses. I love that word as well. I don't know why, but I really do like that word. We've got this Anat Valley caboose, which is in sort of like a brown colour. This one's heavier as well than the other ones, but it has got a die cast chassis. And we've also got this one, which is um, Delaware and Hudson, with a little radio thing under the middle window. So I assume that's a caboose. I'm not sure. I'm not that familiar with my American rolling stock. And we've got just other various freight wagons and things. We've got various hoppers. Canadian National there. Some of these are actually got KD couplers on. And I don't know what that was, but something's just fell off of this one. Yeah, some have got KD couplers on, so. Technically, my stepdad's layout could use these because he uses KD couplers. I don't. I'm, I'm not going into that much detail with mine. I'm quite happy with the old-fashioned Hornby couplings, as annoying as they are. I did like that one, the um, Airy Lackawanna, if I've pronounced that correctly, or I may have butchered it. I'm, I don't know, I'm just guessing. Refrigeration units on there. 
and they all come out, they're all individual. And we've got this one, which has got some, all the lids open up and the hop. Unfortunately, that one's missing, the lid. That? That's a Burlington. Burlington. And we've got various boxed cars as well. The price sticker's still stuck on that one. I haven't taken them all off. Who is that one? That's Rutland. Then we've got Green Bay and Western and Illinois Central. Oddly, Illinois is one of my favourite American place names to say. I really don't know why, I just like saying Illinois. Illinois. And there's another N and W hopper. And I've got three of these, so I'm not going to show you all three because they are exactly the same. A Nap Valley. Very large hoppers full of coal. Slightly different couples on. Uh, we've got a Virginia, Virginian, sorry, hopper. And then the other box is basically just the same, but they've just got various, you know, American names and things on them. That one is actually an old triangle. So that's got to go with my box of old Triang. Just pop this lot back in here. I haven't got any larger tubs kicking about, so I'm just sort of having to stack them in here. That one. And I'm pretty certain I've got a yellow truck on the floor somewhere. A coal wagon. two tankers they had. There's lots of the um, large black coal hoppers, ain't that valley ones, there's several of those. Um, ain't that valley again, just a wagon. And some of these I bought just because I like this colour or the style of them, like this swift refrigeration or refrigerator line. Now, is that the same Swift as the trucking company, or is this a different Swift? I'd be interested to know. There's another Canadian National. A box car this time. Jack Frost, I have no idea about that one. I can't imagine you'd carry ice in it. <laughs> ah, here's the one that's missing with the wheels. Oh, they do have different numbers. This one's um, 41, so I've got 48 and 41. So a bit in reality, you know, they would have loads of these in one long train. I've seen the videos on YouTube on how long uh, the trains in America can get. It's pretty long. I've got a few more. I've got a flat wagon there. Again, a nap valley. I've noticed that. A lot of ANAP Valley stuff is either black or that brown colour. Illinois Central again. There's a boxcar. This has got a lid on it. There's another hopper. And everyone. And we've just got a few more hoppers and a load more of those boxcars that I've already shown you. But a blue one here. We've got a livestock wagon. And we've got whatever this is. Fred Pickles Hammer and Co. If I'm reading that correctly. 57. I'm assuming a pickle wagon maybe. But yeah, the rest are just the usual box cars, just in different colours. That's another A Nat Valley. I think there's another Canadian one in here somewhere. Yep. Chesapeake is another one. Now, I did find one piece of OO gauge stock. It was actually boxed as well. It's Hornby. Um, it's a coach. And it's a coach that I've actually been after as well. But I haven't got many of them. 
cables quite now. There's also a French wagon somewhere, and I don't know where it is. This is made by um, a company called Juf. Juf, Juf. Uh, which is also HO scale, I believe, because it looks far too small for a OO scale. Oh, here it is. But this has actually got the horn with couplings on. I could be wrong, though. Yeah, need some repair work. We've got a buffer missing. So I did find that. I did find that triangle hopper. And I also got another Southern Lines coach. Composite coach. And I got two. <laughs> I'll be able to make a train up soon. I just want two more and that is it. Two more. And I think that will be my lot. Or maybe just two more composite coach and then something like, I don't know, the cafe car, etc. Just so I can mix things up a bit. Because I've got three, four Southern Rail locomotives now. And that is when I realised, because I got the, the extra Southern Rail logos last year, off the diecast guy. And then realised that I had no Southern Rail um, coaches or anything to go with it. <laughs> Uh, that was two quid as well. That was way underpriced. I don't know about the HO stuff, but that was underpriced. I've looked on eBay. I know what they sell for when people bid. It was a lot more than two quid. Um, so, what I like about these is that they've got the white wheels. I don't know why, I just like the white rimmed wheels. I think it looks nice. That is it for Modern Railway stuff at the moment, at least. I'm going to put that with the other stuff so I don't lose it. So, the weekend was actually my first couple of car boots I've done this year. I mean, Alsham started a couple of weeks ago. But uh, just, I was busy with other things, so I couldn't actually go. Anyway, Alsham car boot, I've got a whole bunch of die cast. Um, not too much from the die cast guy because he does that every time. Um, which I've actually got three items from him. There's so much else I found there. Quite a nice little haul actually. And I've got some extra stuff there which I'm pretty certain I did or I have not shown yet. Um, die cast stuff. It's been sitting around on the floor and whatnot. I think I've actually tried doing the videos and then deleted them either accidentally or on purpose. Um, so I am, I've got all the die cast that I'm pretty certain I, well, what I know I haven't done a video on, and I'm pretty certain I haven't done a video on yet, all boxed up down there ready to go. Um, however, I'm going to show you one model, quickly at least. Now I've got this from the diecast guy. He had this particular model up on Marketplace a couple of weeks ago at 250 quid and it didn't sell. Um, he did have someone come out to look at it but they accidentally broke the wheel off because it's so heavy. And I will say it's a 1.8 scale so it's very large and very heavy. And there she is. 1967 Ford Mustang uh, Fastback Shelby GT500. Um, I know I didn't pay the 250 quid for it, I paid 100 for it. But the detail on that is just immense. You know, there's the keyhole on the door for you, your key, as well as the handle, you've got the valve stems for your wheels. Um, all individually fitted wiper blades, radio antenna, fully detailed interior, including um, like a felt or something in there to mimic carpet, so it's not just plastic. Uh, hood opens, trunk opens, doors open. Um, and I don't know if you can see from there, but the wheels aren't actually touching the surface. 
because he glued that rear wheel back on and like I said it's a very heavy model we don't want to break any more wheels off so we're, he suggested to put it on like a plinth thing he actually put a few bits together and let me have those with it so uh, yeah that is uh, gonna sit like that I will do a proper close up on that when I do the die cast video but uh, I just couldn't resist not for a hundred quid and simply because it's a Ford Mustang and that is my number one favorite muscle car I absolutely love them especially the fastbacks you know I doubt I'll ever own a real one as much as I'd love to but I would I would be happy if I could get a ride in one you know someone could just take me for a ride for I don't know half an hour or something in it I'd be happy that would, I'd be quite content with that and maybe not a 60s fastback like that one I'd probably go in just about any Mustang because I do like them <laughs> that's why I've got a box full of them Literally a box full, Hot Wheels, Matchbox, all sorts of brands have all gone into one box. Because whenever I see them, I like to buy them. <laughs> I try not to buy duplicates, but sometimes I end up buying duplicates. And then I don't want to get rid of them because Mustang. But uh, I do, because I don't like keeping duplicates either. Um, yeah, just thought I'd show you that before we get into the car boot stuff. I know I digressed a bit, but yeah. Anyway, um, I didn't really get a lot else at Alshin Car Boot apart from the diecast and a couple of laptops. Oh, and a bicycle. I got a little um, shopper bike thing, like a 1970s, 1980s shopper bike, made by Rally in good condition as well I mean, the rear brake was seized but I managed to um, free that off when I got it home but you know I was looking at it and he just come over and said you know make us an offer on it so I, was, I looked at it and thought well they know it's pretty clean and tidy I know it's got the seized brake on it but it looks pretty clean and tidy so I, was, I thought I would make a you know a fairly decent offer I said 30 quid um, and he stood, he looked at me, he just went, no, fiver, you can take it. So just give me a five and you can take it. So he turned down 25 quid for some reason. Uh, I've got a soft spot for those old bikes. So much so that I've got three here and two over at Mum's. <laughs> I'm not keeping them all though. I did get a couple of them because I just wanted them for parts more than anything to keep the other ones going because they, two of them are actually quite rough. Um, yeah. Laptops. I also paid £5 each for these. Um, now I have powered both up and they do actually turn on. <laughs> Um, so we've got this Advent first, which is just an old, uh, well it would have been a decent Windows XP machine back in the day. I mean it's got SATA hard drive connectors in it, so it uses SATA hard drive, it's got uh, a dual core processor fitted, um, I don't know how much RAM because I've not actually taken that cover off. I do know there's no hard drive in it because one that can't find an operating system when I turn it on and two the cover actually fell off the other day and uh, it just shows that there's no hard drive in it but it is complete but you know five pounds sold as seen basically got HDMI out on the back of this as well someone might have forced it because he got the little uh, threaded insert still stuck on the screw. I, 
could probably fix that if I really wanted to. I don't know how well it would fix that. If it will come off the screw. No hard drive caddy, so. There's a little advent, or large advent. That reminds me I've got to sort a of laptop out for mum because uh, hers died. This is one of the reasons I have kept hold of several half decent laptops. So I've got spares. But I can't decide if I'm going to let you use. Well, that might be an issue. The um, HP that I've got here. I have got the cover for that, I just don't know where it is. Or my Dell. I'm actually leaning towards the Dell because it's got the better processor on it. Um, but it seems to not like 8 gigabytes of RAM that much. But her current laptop has 6 gigs on, which has worked perfectly fine for her, so... Because it's literally eBay, Facebook... eBay, yeah, eBay and Facebook, that's what she uses. <laughs> so, um, I've just got a Windows 8 uh, COA on it. An Intel Pentium processor, though, so not an i3 or an i5. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to find my Dell up. I think that's going to be the most reliable because that has had a full service from me anyway. Now, this is the second laptop that I got for £5. It's a little Toshiba. Um, a Satellite Pro L830-17T with a Windows 8 sticker on it. Now, when I plugged this in, it did actually turn on and boot to Windows 10. However, it was pin protected. Which is different because they're normally password protected, but this was protected by a pin. So I reinstalled Windows on it. Here's a test. I did actually put this on charge. There's, there's no cable connected to it. It did fully charge. It has turned on. Um, yeah, I've reinstalled Windows. So it's got a fresh install of Windows 10 on it. And I discovered that the keyboard is partially dead. Some keys work, some keys don't. Um, very quick that booted as well. Look at that. I don't know what that was. It just flashed on the screen. Um, now, I did have a look on eBay for some of these. And I could not find another one of these or a keyboard anywhere. But it is perfectly good enough for me to use here. I'll just use a USB keyboard on it. Um, this has got 6 gigabytes DDR3 RAM on it and it's an i3. 1.7 gigahertz i3 I think. If memory serves correctly. But yeah, if, if this actually I was going to say, if this had a fully working keyboard, I would have given it to Mum, but it's a bit small. Mum said hers just died on her because she rung me earlier, asked if I had a spare laptop. Mouse is working fine, it's just a whole bunch of the buttons. It seems like it's a bit hit and miss. Uh, which tells me this may have had something spilt on the keyboard and that's what's killed it. But I think part of the problem is with Mum's laptop is that she leaves it on all day. She doesn't properly shut it down. Um, she lets it go into sleep mode and whatnot, but... It's not in bad shape either, really, apart from that scuff up there. And even my brother said, you know, I could easily flip this if I wanted to. Probably could, even with the um, broken keyboard. That is a cover on there, and it 
it's really bugging me because I don't know what it is. I think it's got three USB ports, two of those are USB 3, HDMI, Ethernet, VGA, and a power supply. Oh, and a little card reader for an SD card. That is, that is literally all that's got. I do like Toshiba laptops though. I really do. So that one is going to be a keeper for me. Um, trying to remember where my Dell laptop is. Because I'm going to hopefully sort that out later this evening so I can take it over tomorrow. I don't know, I don't know if they're going to take their laptops with them when they uh, go up to the caravan. Anywho, yesterday's car boot here in North Walsham, they hold it once a month and the pitch fee is free. It's a free pitch. So you can just turn up, park up, you know, they'll direct you where you got to do, got to go, rather. And that is it. Actually, I did have the question, how are they funding for the public liability insurance, because surely they've got to have that as it's a public event. But if they're not charging pitch fees, then where's that money coming from? <laughs> Who am I to ask, you know? I could go over there myself with my trike. I've actually already asked one of the organisers, and they're like, yep, that's perfectly fine. We get people that are dropped off in the car, you know, they just get dropped off by a car and the car buggers off. But they started that, I think, the season before the pandemic hit. Um, but then, of course, they couldn't because of the pandemic. And then they started back up again after things start to clear up. And this will be the second year, I think, that they've had the free pitch fees. It's 50 odd stalls, so it's not a bad sized one. I've been to bigger, but it's not a bad sized one. But I did find a few little bits there. Um, I mean, I paid just one pound for all three items. We've got this USB microscope. I've got another one here that I bought brand new from Lidl's because it was actually 20 quid. It was what I thought was a fair price. It looks identical to this as well. I think that's what this is. It's over here, actually. I'll show you it. Oh, no, this one is a different design. There it is. But believe it or not, that other camera actually, or the microscope camera, whatever you want to call it, does actually work with the software that this is for, um, that this uses. But, uh, these are actually quite fun to play around with and a good help as well. A very good help. So, um, what's the other thing? Oh, I've got this funky little BC Captor GU10 adapter, just because. Once well, I paid a quid for all this, up here, a Logitech HD 1080p web camera, which works perfectly. That is an absolutely lovely picture through that. Um, so I paid, I don't know, not quite, to, it's a bit more than 25 pence a piece, didn't I, for that lot? Which is about all I've got this as well. I only bought this because I've got the rear lights, so I just thought I might as well have this for 50p. Catalay bike light, does work, needs a new battery in it really, but uh, oh, actually the battery's not that bad. That must have been just the sunlight yesterday then that was making it look dimmer, but that is actually not that bad. I shouldn't have sat there staring at it like that. Yeah, I've got the rear light version of this, I've got two of them actually. So I saw that with all the bracket and everything, I thought, you know what, I might as well just have that to go with it. Oh, I've lost a little rubber bit out of it as well. Never mind, I've got plenty of those. What oh, like bulb is this one that I accidentally bought up? Oh, it's that one. Um, and there's just a few Lego items as well, actually, like a bunch of base plates. 
one of which is still over at Mum's because I can't bring it home on the moped, it's too big. It's like about that wide, square. So it's too wide for the backpack and way too big to go under the seat. Um, but yesterday, it's quite scary, you know. There's a guy there, very smartly dressed guy, suit, tie, glasses, very polite as well, very nice guy actually. Um, was selling a load of bits and bobs, including some bagged up Lego. He'd sort them into different bags and he was charging five pounds a bag, which was actually a decent price. Maybe a little bit cheap. I don't know. I think I might put an extra quid on it if it, if it was me. Anyway, he had some base plates there, so I got those as well at five pound each, which was worth it because they are genuine Lego plates. I can't remember what um, vintage set that one came from, but it is for a vintage set. And this one, being the tan colour, is a lot newer. And then I got like four different bags of Lego. I've tipped the windows in for a box, but I've got that as well. That's five because it's three bags of windows. And bag of roof tiles. But the scary thing was, he knew my name. I didn't recognise him though. <laughs> now, at Alsham Cargo, I got a pile of these. Now, these are not genuine Lego plates, these are made by, you know, an off brand or whatever you want to call it. So I've got two green, two blue. I've also got. Smaller tan plate, smaller grey plate. And you kind of need this sort of stuff when you're building a, a Lego City. And a light grey and a dark grey, one of these as well. If you actually put two of these grey ones together, you've got what the green base plate is, which is not genuine Lego. I only paid two quid for that. I paid ten pounds for all of these base plates. I said, they're not genuine Lego though, but that doesn't bother me. You're not really going to notice it when it's in Lego City. And to be fair, it wouldn't bother me if people did notice it. I'm, I'm not a purist. You know, there are some AFOLs, adult fans of Legos. Lego. I just slapped myself on the wrist for that one. <laughs> um, no, nah, I'm really kidding. It doesn't matter if you say Lego or Legos to me. It does irk a lot of people non-Americans when an American says Legos because technically if you want to be proper grammar there is no S on it. The plural would be Lego bricks or Lego pieces you know but uh, I'm not a stickler for that. Ooh. Anyway I've totally forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> I only went from the chair over to there. Hello, sweet stuff. Are you chasing moths again? Mew. Mew. Almost unlike her to come over to me for a fuss. Normally I've got to go to her. You know, she's, she's more independent than smudge. But in my experience, I find that female cats usually are. What are you looking at? What's up there? Anything good? <laughs> oh, I get the sun in my eyes. I'm going to have to sit back a bit. Well, between putting the base plates over there and getting distracted by Snowy, I've completely lost the thread in what I was talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, that was it. It was the um, purists. Yeah, there are those in the A4 community that literally only buy Lego items. Lego sets, Lego bricks. You know, they absolutely hate every other brand. And I will be honest, I was like that in my early days of being an a -form. And I'm going back 20 odd years. Only reason I was, was because back then a lot of other brands were just total garbage. It was absolute shite. You tried to build the little kits and whatnot and the bricks just would not stay together. You'd get frustrated and just throw it in the bin. Um, 
time, but things have improved over the years. I got this off that Timu website. That's like 20 odd quid as well. Now it's following the same theme as Lego Speed Champions, but they've gone for a Japanese Toyota Corolla. The AE86 to be exact. <laughs> She's chasing the light that's reflecting off the box. Ooh. Get it. <laughs> um, this actually built really, really well. I just want to experiment really with Timu just to see if it was a half decent website at least. I mean, there's a bit of a mix. I've seen, you know, other YouTubers buy from Timu and they've bought things that are totally garbage. And I've seen stuff, you know, which has actually been all right. So. I mean, this is fair. I'll give it credit. It's fair. Um, the instructions were the biggest issue. But I find that to be um, common throughout all non-branded Lego stuff. And I can't believe it's April and I've got to have the fan going because it's so hot in this flat. We barely had any sunshine. I don't know why it's so hot in this flat. Anyway, I think that is it for this video. Um, so I'm just going to get this transferred over to the PC in a bit and get it edited up maybe this evening or I'll do it tomorrow, one or the other. Um, just so the camera is actually ready for when I go over to Mum's, hopefully Wednesday. Weather permitting, I'm not going to be riding over if it's you know, pissing it down with rain. So it is uh, highly dependent on the weather. I don't mind riding home in the rain because I can just change into something dry when I get home. Isn't that right, Missy? Yep. <laughs> oh, turn the oven on for me. I'm hungry. <laughs> right. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a, a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. Um, maybe consider subscribing. It is totally free after all. It doesn't cost you a penny. Um, and it helps me. It helps the channel. And it helps you follow the channel. So, to me, it's worth subscribing if you like a channel. And you like their content. Um... And if you actually check the video description down below, my nose is still itching and tickling. Um, there will be links in there to my other two YouTube channels. I have a gaming channel, so if you like gaming, you might want to check that one out. I've got a channel dedicated to all the Lego. So if you just want to see that, then you might want to check that one out. I've also got a Discord server. There. <laughs> I've actually got it up on the screen for a change. Um, actually no, that is not my Discord server. <laughs> That's a server that I actually moderate. Um, yeah, I do have Discord, and I do have um, a Twitch channel. Which you uh, might want to check out as well, if you'd like. Anyway, I will see you all in the next video. Bye!